Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about product sourcing, about importing of products. And obviously that's something on the list of every merchant out there, specifically the ones who are just starting or have not even started yet. They have the big problem to find the right products and obviously to source the products. With me on the show today, I have Brandon Elias. He's the founder and CEO at a2zformula.com. Brandon has been importing products from China since 2001. He has built a seven-figure business around this, selling imported products and selling them on eBay, Amazon, working as little as 10 hours per week. Despite his legal and economic education, Brandon's entrepreneurial blood proved too, too strong to ignore. He leveraged his wealth of experience and built several successful businesses that made millions of dollars by importing high-quality merchandise from China and selling at a profit. Brandon now teaches people from all walks of life to realize their dreams of leaving their nine to five red race to become successful importers and merchants, obviously, in their own rights. So let's welcome Brandon to the show. Hi, Brandon. How are you today? Hi, Klaus. Doing great. Lovely to meet you. And thank you for the awesome introduction. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> great to have you on the show, Brandon. Let's dive right into it. Product sourcing. Seems easy, but it's not. And obviously, it's the core of every business. If you don't have a product, you don't have a business. And a lot of merchants struggle to come up with a plan to find the right product. And then once they have them, to source them, to import them and everything that comes with it. Give you a bit of an idea from your experience, where do people struggle the most with in the beginning? Yeah, okay. Look, the, the biggest problem most people have, um, especially beginners, is what product to actually sell um, anyone who's medium enterprise or large enterprise, well, they're already a going concern, right? So their problem more is what to source or how to source it, where to get it from, how to get good quality. So depending on where you're at. Um, so, um, uh, if, so let's say for the beginners, right? Then the, the first thing you've got to determine uh, is who your market is. And that will answer the question about where to source it from and what to source, right? So uh, if a lot of people are just doing things on, say, Amazon, then you know, you've got to run that through either your Zonguru or your Helium 10s uh, and see how much you know, uh, competition there is. So like, basically, we have five kind of principles. The first thing that we will, in terms of sourcing, or well, not choosing, forget sourcing, choosing a product, is, uh, is, it, um, is it simple and not complicated? So what I mean by that is really what I don't mean by that. So I mean, don't do anything that you would ingest initially, right? Um, or anything that, you know, would go on the skin or anything that could have any danger like that. But those are good products, but not for beginners because um, of the regulations and whatnot and what you got to watch out for. Is it small and light? So Amazon have standard, you know, we've all seen what an Amazon box looks like. There's usually a small standard size or larger standard size that can fit in that box. Is it uh, light, um, which is, you know, under 20 pounds or, you know, 10 kilos if we're using the metric burst imperial system? Uh, and then, you know, once you've got those, then you've just got to take care of the um, uh, profitability side and the competition side. So uh, in terms of, uh, if we're talking Amazon, in terms of uh, profitability, it's got to be, you want to, don't want to sell anything less than 25 US dollars, right? Because you want to make some profit um, and you want to be able to sell it. I used to say four times, but now I say five times than what you bought it for. So it means that if you buy sell this for twenty five, it's got to cost less than five dollars, right? So that would be the thing. If you get it for three or four, fantastic. If you sell it for fifty, then you can you know buy it for ten dollars, right? So that's in terms of it. So five times what you buy it for is what you sell it for, um, and also um, it's got to be above twenty five dollars. So that's it. So then you've got the profitability side, and then there's just demand and competition. So let's just to recap: is it simple? Is it small and light? Um, is it uh, uh, Profitable, is it got enough demand or is there not, not too much competition? So let's talk about demand. So this one, um, everyone has a different formula here. Um, and I would say there's no right formula, right? But what we do in terms of, of demand um, is we look at, we run it through Zonguru or through Helium 10 or whatever. And we just want to check that, you know, when we add up the um, sellers and the total number of sales that, you know, when you add up the average, then there's more than 3,000 units being sold a month, right? If it's 28, 2,900, it's okay. But if there's only 100 units being sold, there's not much much demand for it. So that's what we say in terms of uh, demand. Um, and um, obviously, the higher the price point, so if a product's like, you know, instead of selling for $25, so like for $200, 
then you know instead of having three thousand a month, you could get away with one thousand, two thousand units a month because it's, it's still enough comp uh, demand there. And the last thing is competition. Um, so in terms of competition, what I like to do is firstly I type in the keywords, and I want to see how many results there are. Um, for me, if there's like you know uh, more than a thousand results, then it's too saturated. Um, the sweet spot would be less than that, right? But you know, if a product has maybe two thousand results, but all the other metrics check out, there is a bit of wiggle room there. So it's not gospel; it's not black and white, right? So that's it in terms of the the number of search results. Um, there's three things we look at at demand: we look at search results, we look at the uh, amount of um, uh, whether there's any other key competitors, and we look at reviews. So in terms of reviews, what we like to do is just check out the um, total number of five-star reviews, right, of the of the top 10 sellers. And we want to see that there's a gap there. So if you have 10 sellers and all 10 have 10,000 reviews, then it's going to take too long to get traction there. People are not going to buy from where you're from. So we want to sell find at least four people in there out of the 10 who have less than 50 reviews, right? If it's, if it's less than that, that's good. The, le the less, of course, the better. Uh, and in terms of brands, um, you don't want to go into an industry where uh, there's a key competitor who's a brand name. So I would go into mobile phones and go up against Samsung and Apple, for example. I would go into um, running shoes and try and compete with Nike. So our play is private label, right? There's many ways to skin the cat. You can do arbitrage where you buy low, sell high. But for us, um, it's, you know, we'd stay away from that. So just to recap on the choosing, simple, small and light, uh, enough demand, not too much competition, and I'm missing one. Oh, it'll be in the show notes, but yeah. That's the oh, profitability. profitability. Sorry. Right. Makes absolutely sense. That's, that's choosing, right? So that, And that's for Amazon. If we're going to Shopify, because you're a lot of Shopify people, then you know, you're not going to be using Amazon's traffic. So then Amazon analysis isn't going to be as, as, as relevant. So then you're going to you know, decide if you're going to sell it through Google ads or Facebook ads then, you know, you want to really be seeing what the cost is per click of that product and, you know, whether you have a cool uh, offer and page and whatnot. And remember, you're doing a lot of order bumps and all that sort of thing. So that would be my five-minute version on um, on choosing for the beginners. I think that was already a masterclass and a sort of very long list of homework for somebody who really just wants to get started. Um, if you don't meet any of these criteria, um, then move on and try to find another product. Um, I 100% agree to everything that you said from my experience. Um, you're, you're spot on your point on there. Now, once you have find one or more products that might be suitable to sell them either on Shopify or any other Amazon, any other marketplace, um, sourcing, importing is the next point. It can be very complicated. How do you go around that or how do you get started with that? Okay, cool. Um, so just on the first point, if, if, if you go through that checklist and it doesn't check out with all five, then you just don't do it. You don't go, oh, four check out, but you know, it's 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 uh, 100 kilograms, then you just get bales, right? With sourcing, uh, the main thing I do, look, you can source from any country in the world, right? You don't necessarily have to go to China. Uh, you can source from Mexico. A lot of my students will be doing that as well lately. Uh, you can even source from the USA. But what you're looking for is usually a product that you can private label. So that's that you can mass manufacture. So I'll go to China. Um, Alibaba is the well-known one, right? You've got HKTDC. You've got global sources. People say which one's the best one. There's not really a straight answer for that. There are good people on there you can source from and scouts. But you can just get away from, you get away with just doing uh, Alibaba. So you go there, you type in the keyword, understand that some keywords, some products might be called different things in different countries. So for example, if I look at the product, the, the most money I ever made of any product was when I was 21, right? Um, and I was importing motorcycles out of China. They were pocket bikes. They were 49cc engines. They were like this big or this big. An adult would ride on them. They would go at, um, you know, 20, 30 kilometers an hour, whatever, enough to be dangerous. I used to sell them for 400 and buy them for 80 from motorcycle. We used to do a container with 330 in them. And that was very, very, very profitable, right? So that was a really cool product. But... I couldn't find them initially until I looked at the other names. It was called a monkey bike. So when I looked at monkey bikes instead of pocket bikes, then I found like way more people offering it. So just be aware that it might have another word. Like just a funny example I talk about is that, you know, when, you know, one of my suppliers came to Australia from America, because I saw the selling from America, I said, um, uh, let's go to the beach. And he's like, cool. I said, hey, I've got a collection of uh, thongs in my in my place. You could pick whichever... Uh, 
of your of my thongs you like and we can wear them to the beach uh, and he looked at me like I had two heads of course in America um, they wear flip-flops to the beach and a thong is a g-string whereas in Australia they're called thongs in uh, uh, New Zealand they're called jandals don't ask me why so they're, they're important to know those cultural differences especially around words um, I don't know what you call them in, you know in Germany what what the words are maybe it's just sandals uh, it's sandals flip-flops yeah something like that yeah awesome. <laughs> So then we type it in and then um, we have um, a, a template, which is how to actually uh, approach the factory, where we ask about 20 questions, which are designed to make sure that you weed out the scammers. Because I understand that there are a lot of people, especially sitting in Nigeria and Lagos, who are pretending to be factories. So we send those out. They're designed to make sure that um, no one uh, is cheating you, but also to make it position you as an expert. And what that does, it helps the factory to give you a good quality price. So a good quality product and a good price. So we'll send that out to 20 factories. Let's say half will reply. Um, and then out of those 10, let's say, you know, we're selling a product. Um, let's just say, for example, I'm drinking my coffee from a ceramic cup, right? So uh, let's say that, you know, hypothetically, um, you would sell this ceramic cu cup for whatever it is. I know we said $25, but for this example, let's say 10. Yeah. Um, then you would want to buy it for $2 because it's a 5X thing. So you have 10 factories. One's at 10 cents. One's at 20 cents. One's at 30. The other's at $1.20. The other's at $1.80, 190 and two. So how do you pick? Well, we take the top 20%. So we average, add them all together, average it, we find the average, right? We want to take out the top 20%, the one that's $1.80, $1.90, cut those out because we want to make profit. But also the ones that are less than 50 cents, um, we also cut them out. And people are like, hang on, we want to make profit. The thing is, if it's too good to be true, that there's usually a reason for it. And that's where the scammers lie, right? Also, sometimes that can be stock that is um, you can buy in a job lot, but they're discontinued. So if you have a going concern where you have customers who are going to buy more and more and come back and buy more, then you can't get that same stock again. So why do you want to do that? Because you're trying to build a business here, not just make a one-off payment, uh, one-off cash flow injection. So that's it. So we take the top 20%. So then what I like to do um, is out of those, um, I pick the three that communicate the best. When I say the best, it's usually the fastest, right? That, that come back faster. Um, and um, you want to avoid trading companies if you can uh, and deal directly with the factory so there's no extra margin. Uh, and then uh, out of the ones, I'll pick the three that's, that are the best communicators and I'll get a sample from them. And the sample might be um, $2.00 but the shipping might be 50. So I'll pay $52 to the factory. And this is where people come unglued, beginners especially, because they're like, oh, I don't want to pay money unless I know it's going to work. Well, you have to have a bit of a little bit of risk money. So I'll pay $52 times three to three factories, $154, I'll ship them, and I'll put them side by side, and whichever one I feel the most comfortable with, that's the one I'm going to order, right? So then um, I place the order with the factory. Now, the goal here is not to get the best price. The goal is to get the lowest MOQ, which is minimum order quantity. So if I want factory charging me, let's say a dollar, uh, but I have to order 50,000 cups, uh, ceramic cups, or I have another factory charging me a dollar 20, but they let me order 500, then I will get the one that lets me do 500 because then I'll pay $600 versus 10,000 or whatever uh, so that I can keep my cash flow. Your goal is not cash, is not profitability, in the, it's just to prove the concept. So whatever you can do to conserve your cash. Sometimes the factory will say, no, we need to do this order of this amount. In that case, I say, look, you're charging me a dollar. What if I pay you a dollar 20 for less? Will you let me do it? And often they'll say yes. Um, also, one thing I forgot, you can get the samples for free. People get hung up on that. If you say, when I place my order, can I get my $52 back against the order? And I've never seen a note of that question. So you get a free sample, but it depends on your placing an order. Now, the next step is you pay 30%. So let's just take the example of a dollar 20 times um, 500 cups, that's like, let's do a bit more. Let's say it's a thousand cups at a dollar 20, right? Then we'll say to the down, what most people do is the factory will say, here's an invoice for uh, $1,200, please pay it. And then you pay it and then the goods never come. The reason why is that you lose your leverage. So you need to pay 30% up front. So it'd be 30% of $1,200, $360. That gets the job started. And then 30 days later, the goods are ready. And then you pay the balance once the goods are ready, don't pay it all up front. Um, I like to give a story about the clever bank robber and the stupid bank robber. So the clever, the stupid bank robber goes in, robs the bank. 
uh, gets all the money, million dollars in cash. And then the police, and he's got 10 hostages, and the police say, what are your demands? And he says, well, I want a limousine to the airport, and then I want to fly to Argentina, to Buenos Aires, right? So I can hang out with Klaus. Um, not that you would associate with these kinds of people, right? But just just type. So then, okay, what happens next? Um, so the police say, okay, cool. So you send out, send out the 10 hostages, right? Um, you've got your million dollars. Now, you tell me if you were the police and the robber released the 10 hostages, what would you do next? Well, go go for them directly. I mean, it's like the police. Yep. Right. You'd come and you'd arrest <laughs> them, shoot them, and that's it. Right. But if you, but so that's why you only release three hostages, right? The two women and the child. And now you've got seven men in there. Then you get in the limousine, you drive to the So the clever robber will release three hostages, go to the airport in the limousine, get to the airport. And then as he's the plane's taking off, he'll gently push them down the escape slide and fly to Buenos Aires to have some. Uh, uh, Argentinian beefsteak with you and some uh, Malbec, all right? So that's how they do it. Now, why the hell am I talking about bank robbery when we're talking about sourcing? Well, the same thing. You, you Three hostages is 30%, seven hostages is 70%, right? So you wait till the goods are ready and you pay the 70%. But what I like to do is to just do an inspection, which costs two, 300 bucks to make sure the goods are actually existing and that they're good quality, then it's safe to pay. Um, so that's essentially, so in step one, use my proven template, um, I'm not sure how it works, but if you want, I'm happy in your show notes to give a link to the template. People can download for free. I usually charge my students for that. If that's something you want me to do, have to do that. Um, you guys can just copy and paste that. Just put your own details in. Uh, and then once they do that, then, um, you place your order, you do your inspection, you pay your balance. And that's essentially, that's a summary of it. Mm. And that's a pistol success. Yeah. I think you giving the farm away, you're giving so much experience out there. And I think that's that's where it comes from. You're doing this for a very long time. And I have been partly on the same um, experience path with what you did. So I can vouch for what you're saying is 100% right. Now, with, with your experience, it shows already is if you're coming as a, as a beginner, as a newbie to this game, there is so many potential issues that you can run into and lose money and lose your motivation. And um, what I liked a lot that you said proof of concept i think that that's always very very important but also having people on your side who have been through this and can help you with the experience that you don't pay money for mistakes that you don't necessarily need to make now with hz formula you, you're helping with this give, give me a bit of an idea where you help people with and, and what you offer sure okay so um here's essentially how i got into it right so my dad was born in 1935 in singapore when he was seven years old, 1942, World War II broke out. And uh, he was in Singapore and he was um, taken and put in uh, a Changi internment camp, Changi prison, which is now uh, the airport. Um, and he had to learn how to survive. So he had a beautiful singing voice um, and uh, he sang to the soldiers, the samurais, and he would get a cigarette. He would swap that for oranges and he'd swap that for sardines. He'd be the king of the camp for a day. The next day to do it, do it again. So he learned four or five different Chinese languages Right? And when he came to Australia, my home country, which you can probably tell from my accent, uh, he was able to speak Chinese. So he had the first fax machine in Australia. Um, he would ma uh, send a fax to China. I remember as an eight-year-old boy, I used to go to dad's office and I got to send the fax and press the button. And then it would go, you know, and like 20 minutes later, a single page of information went through amazing technology. So for the time. So dad would send it that and then the goods would come and back then it was a captive market because there's no internet, right? So dad would make a lot of money. Um, and my mom and dad actually brought Donkey Kong to Australia in the 80s. So that was them. So I grew up in this environment. They wanted me to be a, to be a lawyer. I became a lawyer. I wasn't a good lawyer. Um, I just didn't like it. I actually had undiagnosed ADHD at the time. I only found out three years ago I had it. How I completed my degree, I don't actually know. But anyway, the, the fact is I started making a lot of money online. 2009, we started um, teaching how to do it. So we're actually the longest running e-commerce education company on the planet. No one's done it longer than I, and we're around because we, we care about the students and we want to make sure that we get a great result. And sometimes we have to tell them stuff they don't like to hear, but, but, but that gets the result. So, um, so we've been doing that for, what, close to a decade and a half. Um, and the way that we help people is um, we have a two-day event, which we run every couple of months. Um, and if you're watching this now, there'll probably be a link to the next event. It's free to attend. Um, well, actually, it's $5,000 to attend. 
But if you come through a trusted partner like Klaus, then we give you one free ticket. Right? So you can come to that. Um, and the only condition is that you um, you block out your weekend and you give full focus and you bring the energy up of the people, right? So we're giving you a free ticket. You, you have to add energy to it, not, not suck energy. And that just means asking questions, listening, taking notes, not disappearing and onto your Facebook or you know going out for to go bowling. And then, um, yeah, and then we just show you exactly how to do it yourself from scratch. And then, you know, some people want to use our office on the ground in China for us to just source for them um, or to have a coach who for every week for a whole year will get on a Zoom for half an hour and guide you through it like I'm doing now, but specifically to your case. And some people want us to build their Shopify stores or to, um, uh, you know, do the inspections for them for their product or, you know, to des design their packaging and everything. So just using my... Everything I do myself, my own products, I created systems for myself and then people found that valuable. So, you know, about you know two or three years into like 2011, 2012, people said, please don't teach me how to do this. Just do it for me. So we cover both people, both, both, both. Them. So we have a lot of time on their hands. They want to do this themselves. We say go for it. And some are like, they don't have much time. They just want someone to do it for them. And then others have the time, but they're scared and they don't want to screw up. So, you know, that, that's how it works through our two-day weekend event. It's, it's, it starts early. It's in, uh, from like, you know, nine to five on a Saturday and a Sunday. But I have eight guest speakers, friends of mine, help me in the business who come and share information. So it's pretty cool. A lot of fun. Um, I love, like, we love that event. It's, it's uh, I call it infotainment because people don't just learn if you just talk at them. You've got to tell stories. So um, by the end, people are enjoying themselves. They're laughing. There's like a little bit of a get-together at night called Wine and Cheese where people can ask direct questions to the coaches and get them answered. And um, we cover everything, all the latest stuff, AI, um, and all, all that stuff's covered. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, everyone who is here, if you're listening to this, then you know, you've know you got um, you've got a free ticket to attend. No, it sounds like fun. But more importantly, I think it's important to have someone who is in the, in the grind every day, um, who went through the learning curve and, and is on top. And actually, um, yeah, communicates information that is this that is real and actual so um, a lot of things that you find on on the interwebs are outdated stuff that worked maybe two three years ago and if you follow that then you might have a, a problem and also I th what I like is the community aspect to it you meet probably with other people who have the same plans or on the same track as you and that always gives a lot of synergy in there No, before, before we come to the end of the coffee break today, um, what is one final thought that you want to leave our listeners with? Um, don't be, uh, don't be afraid. Like, like be prepared and be accept that your first product may screw up totally. You might bring a product and you know, whatever happens, your calculations are off or just a bit of bad luck and it didn't make money. And that's okay because you got to look at this as a learning process. Yeah. My first product didn't make money. So just be fair. It might be your second and third. But as long as you go through and when something happens that isn't to your liking, you analyze why and you fix that. The next time around, you'll get better. I mean, I, it's like a half-life. You know, if you do 10, if you have, there are 10 things to do it correctly and you do six correctly and four you screw up. Then the next time you do it, then you'll make eight correctly and screw up two. And the next time you do it, you'll do nine correctly and screw up one. All right? Um, so just understand that. So be forgiving on yourself and be kind to yourself. And just paint your back. Most people don't do this. Most people will work nine to five. They'll work for their boss, make their boss rich. The fact that you get your balls and you put it on the line and you do that is a credit to you. So I, I said anyone who tries that and puts this, um, a, you know, a little bit of risk of a, a few thousand dollars, um, that's going to start changing your brain to become an entrepreneur and not a salaried worker. And they're the type of people we like to help, you know, um, every day of the week and twice on Sundays. Very well said. I 100% agree on that one. Where can people find out more about you? Sure. So um, in the show notes, uh, there is a link to your free ticket um, from the top of my head. Uh, that, of course, is a to z formula.com slash product sourcing made easy. a to z formula.com slash product sourcing made easy. And you get your link to the event uh, and uh, register. And uh, we will see you there. Okay. I will we'll put, obviously, the link in the show notes and you're just one click away. Brendan, thanks so much. That was a masterclass on sourcing. Um, so there's so much content in there. I think our listeners listen need to listen twice to this episode at least to get all of out of it. And I'd like to thank you for that. And I hope to talk to you too soon again. Thanks so much. Vielen Dank. Con gusto. Con gusto. Hey, Klausia, thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. 
Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.